Greetings. Welcome to my podcast that features my book, Colonial American History Stories, 1215 through 1664. In this episode, we learn about Giovanni Lavaranzo and his search for the Northwest Passage. Columbus's new world discovery for Spain in the late 15th century and early 16th century sparked enormous competition among the other European nations. King Francis I of France sponsored Giovanni Lavaranzo's first of three voyages to North America, attempting to find a passage to Asia through these new worlds. Giovanni de Lavaranzo lived from 1485, we think, until 1528. Historians know little of the early life of him. His son of Piero Andrea de Bernano de Lavaranzo and Fiametta Capelli, Giovanni was a native of Val de Grieve, Italy. Lavaranzo began an adventurous life early traveling both to Egypt and Syria. Sometime around 1508, Varanzo traveled to France. While there, he became acquainted with the French Navy and met with Francis I, King of France. Word of Columbus's discoveries in the New World had begun to filter into the various European capitals, as well as the, as well as the voyages of Americo Vespucci for King Manuel I of Portugal. Francis I hired Gio, Giovanni La Varanzo to explore North America in 1523. His mission was to focus on the area between Florida and Terra Nova, or the Newfound Land. The beginning of the first attempt is not well documented. Varanzo departed with four ships, the Dauphine, the Normanda, the Santa Maria, and Vittoria. The Santa Maria and Vittoria perished in a storm. The Dauphine and La Normanda returned to port for repairs. The Normanda was no longer seaworthy, so the Dauphine set sail once again on January the 17th, 1524. Varanzo and his crew arrived offshore from Cape, Cape Fear, North Carolina, sometime around March the 1st, 1524. He sailed south a short distance, then returned to his starting point. At first he thought the land was uninhabited, however they saw fires on land, indicating that there were people living there. After searching for a suitable anchorage, Verrazano had the ship anchored a distance offshore. He sent a boat ashore with 25 men. The surf made it impossible to land the boat safely, so a young sailor swam to shore with trinkets and other items meant to impress the inhabitants. He foundered in the power, powerful surf and almost drowned. The natives, seeing his plight, pulled him from the water, stripped him, and laid him by a fire to revive him. Their actions at first alarmed the young man and his companions in the boat, thinking that the natives were preparing to cook and eat him. At length, they convinced him of their friendly intentions and set him free to return to the boat. The boat returned to the ship and after a time proceeded north along the North American coast, continuing the search for the Northwest Passage. On or around April the 17th, Giovanni entered Hudson Bay. He found the area well populated with natives, who reacted to his ship with wonder. The expedition stayed in the area for several days, anchoring in the harbor near Manhattan Island and sending a small boat up the Hudson River. Stormy seas forced the ship to sail east along Long Island until they reached the area that is now Newport, Rhode Island. They stayed in this region for about two weeks, exploring and visiting with the natives. Verrazano departed from this area and continued sailing northeast along the coast. After sighting Newfoundland, the expedition, with supplies nearly exhausted, set its course to return to France. Verrazano would make two more voyages to the New World. The second voyage, in 1527, went to South America in search of a passage through the, the Pacific, which it did not find. His third voyage to the Caribbean ended in disaster. Legend has created two accounts of his death. One version that he and his crew landed on an island inhabited by hostile natives who captured him, killed him, and consumed his body. Another related that the Spanish captured him and executed him for piracy. The ne next episode recounts the failed settlement of North Carolina by Spanish explorer Lucas Vasquez de Alion. Find out more about colonial history of the United States by purchasing the book Colonial American History Stories 1215 through 1664. The book is a timeline of events from Christopher Columbus to 1664. It is part of a larger series of 12 books, the Timeline of United States History Series. The history at this time takes the reader up to the opening year of the Revolutionary War, 1775. I am currently writing 1776. You can find the books on my website, www.mossyfeetbooks.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. 
you may cho choose to purchase the book in ebooks or softbound versions. An audiobook version is available on Google Play. At the conclusion of this series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, as well as many other audiobook sellers. You can find this podcast on Apple, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, TuneIn, and many other podcast platforms. I publish a video version on YouTube and Rumble. You can also order the books directly from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign a book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instructions on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to, want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notifications of my releases can just send me an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and 